when I'm not stealing all my best ideas from smaller YouTubers, claiming them as my own, and then drawing out a lengthy legal process so they get another credit. I like to answer questions I get on YouTube about Led Zeppelin. So let's get to it. True story. So I've got I've got my man Ian here. Hey guys. Because he's kind of like the Zeppelin go-to source in town, in my estimation. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, I you know you more about, no. No, oh, it's you. Well, thank you. It's you. That's not true. And we've got, we, I had a few Zeppelin questions, so I'm like, hey, let's just make a Led Zeppelin mm -hmm. video. Yeah, Q&A video. Q&A video. And also, I went, I just went live on my channel, and we, we got, got a we, couple more. We got a couple more. We sourced a few more of them. Sourced a few more, which are all up in the noggin, which I'll totally forget. That's right. <laughs> so here we go. Okay. A few things, my man. Absolutely love the voice <laughs> when reading the Salty Blues comments. It's like there are hundreds of people out there that all sound the same. By the way, you guys should be so grateful now that you know how to play a G note. And Radiohead was sued by the Hollies over the same song, Cracks Me Up, and I've wondered for years if a significant portion of Jimmy Page's genius was inspired by playing in a band with John Bonham. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. So the, it, the question here is if Jimmy Page's guitar genius was inspired by the drummer that he played with. Oh, you know, it's, I can't believe you even asked that question. Now, I had no access to that question. <clears throat> That's right. These, like, these are all though, off the cuff. Even though I went live and yeah. we were, like, we're doing prep work, you didn't read me that question. I know. Um, I will answer. Can I answer? Yeah, okay. that's why you're here. So, no, well, two things. Okay, so don't get upset. Don't get upset because I'm going to mention a band that you absolutely hate, which is Fish. So <laughs> I don't hate Fish. I hate, I hate Kiss. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> okay. I, I hate Kiss. I don't like Fish. Well, and like yeah, I get it. And you, yeah. it's, it's totally fine. I, I was reading an article about Trey, and they asked him where he gets most of the musical ideas from, and he always says like he gets them from listening to John Fishman. Like listening to his rhythms, yeah. And like when John Fishman's playing drums, he'll like hear this music. As a matter of fact, like there's a quote. Who knows if it's true that the reason the band is named Fish is because he always thought that why would you go to a Fish concert and not listen to John Fishman because he's such a good drummer? Like sure. because he loves listening to you know. So like even though Trey's a monster on guitar, Trey was like, "Does anyone notice how good this drummer is?" Type thing. And yeah. let's name the band after this. And so I was when I uh, yesterday I did a little uh, live feed and I talked about Misty Mountain Hop. Mm -hmm. Now Misty Mountain Hop I don't think is one of those like quote unquote plagiarized songs you know like that right. I don't know I mean I've I've heard all the, the, which the majority the, of Led Zeppelin yeah. is not by the way yeah it's not but like mm -hmm. there are but you know what was so awesome about that song is just how great the drums and the guitar riffs mesh they sing and out I, yeah I mean just and, and in that moment that mm -hmm. it comes in so good. I mean it's like a holy moment of music and so I will say that you know I, I've never met Jimmy Page but being a guitar player like most of your <clears throat> Um, insights and ideas come from when the drums are being played and like it, this rhythm perspective that you get to give color to. Sure. So I, I would say yes. I would say like his songs, his ideas, his solos and everything came from this relationship of having a really solid drummer and being able to color those rhythms. So hundred percent. Yeah. And you know, playing with with a drummer before is like it's so much easier to write riffs. Because you see what him or her is doing and you kind of just like accent that. Yeah. And playing percussively on a guitar to match a drum is oh, yeah. how you write riffs in general. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So I think, yeah. So this question's right on. Right on. Bonham had a huge influence on I, Paige's riffs. I do actually think that, like, you know, I'm not saying that Bonham's the most important, but there's something so special about Bonham's playing that you hear is it's beyond just the drummer's role. Mm -hmm. his, his beats breathe, really breathe life into the songs. Sure. And, and I feel like, if, you know, if, you, if you're interested in writing riffs, Go play with the drummer and see what it's like because I mean, imagine being Jimmy Page and all of a sudden finding John Bonham and him being like, Oh, yes, or if you're <laughs> trying to write a riff, pull yeah. up some backing tracks and stuff, too. There you go. Which I think this question was kind of born talking about Jimmy Page's post up and stuff and how nothing was really as good. Oh, yeah, that makes you sense. Yeah. Because his the voice of what we know Jimmy Page to be is yeah. really interconnected with John Bonham. I have to agree 100%. Same thing with a lot of solo guitar players who go afterwards, kind of like John uh, John Frashani of the Chili Peppers. Yeah. His solo stuff sounds nothing like yeah. the Chili Peppers stuff. A lot of that is probably because Chad Smith isn't there just freaking laying it down like a madman. And, and Trainastasio <laughs> has a band called Tab, the Trainastasio band, which is mm -hmm. nothing like Fish. They do cover Fish songs, but the, everything's very straightforward. Sure. You know, so like it's more of just like a rock thing. Very stable palette instead yep. of yeah. So and then you think of another who I can say, who's the greatest drummer of all time, greatest rock drummer of all time. You know this, Danny Carey. Danny Carey. Oh, thank you. Okay. Which are they going to punch me in the face? And then you look at Adam Jones, one of the great riff writers of all time. Oh yeah. Is that a coincidence? I don't, I don't know. Think, I don't there has to be some so. sort of contract people sign to get that probably, relationship. Probably. probably yeah. You need a good drummer. 
Next question. Next question. Hey Sean, I remember you saying in your last live feed that Jimmy Page is a good guitar teacher. Any recommendations for any songs to learn? Keep up the awesome work. First of all, I said he's a great guitar teacher. You did. I remember that moment. And I kind of feel like he was like my first guitar teacher. Just yeah. listening to, to Zeppelin, accessible riffs that yeah. you can play at any level. Yes. But you can never play just like him. So riffs that will continue to teach you. Continue. Like Whole Lot of Love is a great example. Absolutely. I can play a minor third yeah. over and over again. But yeah. it's really, there's, there's a little bend there. There's, there's technique that goes into all this to get feeling. it right. You can't, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. you, can, you can hear somebody like trying to play Whole Lot of Love, and then you can play Whole Lot of Love. Mm -hmm. the, one of the songs that, that he wrote that I teach a lot of is actually No Quarter. Just that, just the power chord slide, the bar, I mean, there, there's a lot of sass to that slide. Sure. That's not like a, like a slide that's in like oh, a state no. of time. There's, mm -hmm. there's a real good feeling to that. And so I think that when, yeah, he's a great teacher in terms of his riffs. Whether I know people are gonna, people are gonna crap on like well, you still who cares his riffs his interpretations of it um, are motivating and you can play them and they teach you a lot about technique I mean sure. they really do so mm -hmm. other what other songs like I would recommend uh, Over the Hills and Far Away Absolutely. as a learning experience yeah because it's got a little bit of everything from everything you want to learn guitar. It so it's out with a lot of acoustic hammer on pull off type mm -hmm. type deals. Then it goes into like a blues shuffle yeah. type thing. It has the, the, uh, that that G to A feather touch. Ding, da, da, ding, da, 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 yeah, and then to the quick G D D A chord change. Over the hills and far away. That is my recommendation for you to learn. Yeah, I remember learning. And I was like, wow. I think I'm repeating myself. I mean, it's awesome. I think I'm repeating myself, but which I just did. Um, yeah. <laughs> I actually did. Uh, Gallows pole for chord changes. Oh, gallows pole. I mean. If you can fire through a gallows pole and not mess up with between A's, G's, and D's at that, <clears throat> that, that pace, yeah, go get them. There you go. <laughs> How about John Paul Jones post Led Zeppelin stuff? What about you? Go first. So we've talked a lot about uh, the other Zeppelin's post stuff. Bottom, mm -hmm. there is none of, sadly. <laughs> Why would you laugh at that, Ian? But that's the way you, like, shake your... Jimmy Page. I, I said I'm not a huge fan of the Outrider stuff, etc. But whatever. He's in his castle. R yeah, he's He doesn't his... care about uh -huh. anything. <laughs> that's yeah. fine. That's fine. He earned it. It seems like he's just been remastering the things over and over. The tracks over and over. But that's kind of cool. Getting, I know. Like, it's great. It's I like mean, watching a movie from when sure. you're young. And then watching again when you're older and mm -hmm. re-getting things. Like, what a great retirement job <laughs> to just be remixing Led Zeppelin albums. <laughs> which is essentially what he's been doing. And he created the job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's great. Exactly. Yeah, Robert Plant, who's a post stuff I love, I'm mm. absolutely in love with him. Incre yeah. Incredible. He's a great vocalist. I mean, he uh, really is. And just solid musician. The people I mean, don't I just say really, musician. Yeah, yeah uh -huh. it's true. It's true. Uh, but JPJ, underrated as always. Yeah, had the best post Zeppelin side project. Them Crooked Vultures. Yeah, you love them. I love them. Love them. Vultures. You introduced them to me. I know. Josh Tommy, Dave Grohl, <laughs> super group. One of the super groups that works, in my opinion. Yeah. And doing it when he's like seventy years old too, just rocking. What is he seventy? Like seventy two. God bless him, man. Right? He's still rocking. You know, I was gonna say like, um, when I'm writing a riff or writing a song, the whole idea in my head, I have this one word in my head, which I always strive for, it's, and it's funny, which is wholesome. Like I want it to be a wholesome song. Wow. I don't want. I don't want. I don't want the solos to be like, "Wow, well, look at me!" I don't mm -hmm. want anything to be like standing out. I want everything to be wholesome. And when I think of John Paul Jones, I think of like he is one of the most wholesome musicians <laughs> ever. He is. He keeps on playing music. He loves yeah. his music. He never. He never like. I don't know. It's hard to explain. He just stays so true to the fact that he's a bass player, piano player. And he loves experimenting within that realm. Mm -hmm. And nothing is too flashy. He likes doing the right things at the right time. And I think that's why Zeppelin was so good as well. Um, but yeah, I think he's such a wholesome musician who can carry his whole lifespan playing wholesome bass lines. So wholesome. There's nothing wholesome about some of the synth arrangements near the end of Led Zeppelin, though. They kind of... I'm kind of out on those. But that was, the so that was the sound of the time, yeah. I understand. Now it sounds it dated to me. I, I think know. it's wholesome. I mean, imagine like Yes was playing that. Yeah, <laughs> you know, sure, like... sure. No, it's great. <laughs> or even the stuff they do with the Rolling Stones. Yeah, he did some like did? Uh, keyboard arrangement. Uh, the See, Rolling Stones. Very, yeah, it's. You I got my Achilles heel, John not Paul my, Jones. Not, hey, John, I oh. love John Paul Jones. He's great. Yeah, He's but great. yeah, them Crooked Vultures to me is where it's at. Huh? Go. You'll have. I'm sure you'll post a. You want to post a listening assignment? On yeah, the... we'll do. Yeah, well, I'll let them part of the listening homework. There There'll be go. multiple ones. Oh my! Yeah, very good. Very good. Have you seen any Zepparella all-girls Eplum band? 
I have not seen Zeb Brown. Neither have I. But I have seen Les Zeppelin. Me too! Which I had no idea that she saw them until just now. Les Zeppelin was awesome. All girl Zeppelin cover band that rocked the house when I saw them. They, they, I, re I remember, I can, I can still picture the, uh, the guitar player. She came out with a Les Paul mm -hmm. and she was just like, Thin girl, and Les Paul came down to like, oh, yeah. like her thigh, like uh -huh. down, like Jimmy Page would have it. I was like, no way. And they just busted in, and I was like, this it is was, awesome. It was awesome. Yeah, it so was like two hours straight of just nonstop rock. I was, just, I did not, I was not prepared for it. I, I, I saw them at the legendary like Iron Horse Club in mm -hmm. Northampton, Massachusetts. It's a very like popular club. Sure. And uh, it's a small stage, and the place had like, I don't know, 400 people in it. And they, the first note, like the first note, I was like, "Mother ever, this is awesome!" <laughs> it was great. <laughs> yeah, I was. It was fantastic. I was the drummer is so good too. Yeah, they're, they're, like the, all, the whole band is awesome. The whole band. Is, Some of these cover bands out there too. Like, they, I'm gonna Google right now, like, are they, if they're still around. But go ahead. Sure, go, go ahead. ahead. Yeah, I like. I don't know if you've ever seen some of these like tribute bands or anything like that, but usually they're like great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. I saw an ACDC one too. I can't find them. And right. it was just like, it's like I feel like this is I've never seen ACDC. But this sounds exactly like how I would expect ACDC to sound. So give love to some of those tribute bands. Some tribute bands are awesome. Yeah. I mean, actually, well, it doesn't matter. Yeah, there's a Grateful Dead cover band in Tampa called Uncle John's Band. And you close your eyes and of course, yeah. they sound like sure. they're uh -huh. Shut up. <laughs> hey, so yeah, if you, don't, if you don't get an opportunity to see some of your favorite bands, check out the tribute bands because they're good. And support the ones that are really good. Yeah. The sure. ones that aren't good, just be like, whatever. Mm -hmm. But like the ones that are good, mm -hmm. they're doing something. I don't know, like Bad Fish is a great sublime cover band. I've never heard of them, but yeah. Oh, we used to we used to we used to actually open my band a long time ago open for Bad Fish, and I'd mm -hmm. always be surprised, like I'm like, they sound exactly like Sublime. I think they're still touring, so they're, awesome. they're worth it. anyway, where where do we go? Where, where do we go? Was Jimmy Page a sloppy player? Yes. Yeah, he was. Yeah. In the very best possible way. In the best he wasn't sloppy like a kid picking up a guitar and whacking on the guitar neck. Yeah. He was sloppy as in it was rock and roll. Mm -hmm. We mentioned this earlier. In Heartbreaker, you clearly hear him like choke for a second on the great solo, but it doesn't matter, which makes it Playing that solo even harder because <laughs> sure. like, yeah. you don't know as a guitar player whether you need to like put in a, like a, a mess up mm -hmm. <laughs> or just keep going. But there are plenty of moments in Stairway to Heaven, around, like in one of the verses, you hear you hear his thumb like click a string on the acoustic. Who cares? Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I, it's, I, don't care. I don't care. Some some people get upset about that. You game. know, if you Jimmy Page versus like Joe Satriani, Joe Satriani is super clean. Yeah, you know, Jimmy Page is not, but nonetheless, tasty, tasty, tasty. And the writing. I think he's a writer first and foremost, yeah. and that's you know, the, yeah. be the best guitar writers aren't generally always like the best players from a technical standpoint. Yeah, they like yeah, f it. I just want to play it. And yeah, however exactly. it comes up, comes this out. is how I play it. Is it? Yeah, yeah. appreciate it. Do your thing, Jimmy. All right. So for listening homework, I, this is the actual listening homework is going to be your thing, but I will. It's the oh. it's. She's a Rainbow by the Rolling Stones is the one I was thinking of. The John Paul Jones. John, oh, yeah. Well, I'm Which piano. is a very wholesome piano thing that I'm not really into. But if you want to check it out, there it is. It's, you don't like wholesome uh, music. I mean, sometimes there's a time and a place. Um, like if I'm a child. If <laughs> <laughs> you want time and play. <laughs> it's too funny. Um, my listening to homework, but like, it's like, I think we're preaching to the choir. Like, who's watching this video hasn't heard every Led Zeppelin song 85 times, right? Not necessarily. I don't but, know. But I'll, I'll go on a limb and say, listening homework uh, from Stitch would mm -hmm. be, um, my God, is it in the evening? In the evening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That riff, fantastic. Okay, because he does something sort of wobble at the end. And not one of the more popular songs. Not for one. Sure. But right. the guitar solo to In the Evening. It has this like he bends on on his on his whammy and like comes out of it like and it's, oh it's awesome. So just listen to that solo. That's a hard solo to like conquer um, if you don't have any sort of bending, you know, <laughs> instrumentation. Sure. So uh, in the evening for the sheer genius of using uh, his equipment well. Beautiful. There you go. All right. There's nothing more wholesome than using your equipment well. That's true. Till next time. Bye. <laughs>